I am privileged to be at a place called Dickinson College, the first in America after we were established in a country, established by Benjamin Rush, who signed the Declaration of Independence. And when he established Dickinson College, he said words that I think brought me to Dickinson. We are here, we are educating, engaged citizens for a new democracy. I think we're still at it. I think that's still a task that we all have to work on all the time. And that history is a big part of our identity at Dickinson. Since I've arrived and because of what I've learned out in a very remote part of the world, that when we give young people the big problems, they can solve them. They can take them on and they come back to class asking all the right questions. I used to teach a development class and I remember one day a young man whose dad owned an oil company in Nigeria and he thought he was pretty well set for his future. And I set him out to feed and read and I said, go, try to help these kids to learn how to read. And he came back to class furious. And I said, what's wrong? He said, how is it possible in my country there are 12 year olds who have never seen a book? I said, well, that's your job, isn't it? To figure that out. I think we're at that moment in America now where we have to make sure our young people are exposed to these very big problems and we give them the knowledge and skills um, and confidence to know they can solve them. One of the things we've launched at Dickinson is an intercultural competency campus-wide program. Because coming home, I'm coming home after seven years to a different America that's more deeply divided than I could have imagined we could be. And when you live outside the country for as long as I have, you come to have deep respect for America and what it stands for. And I think if all of us could think about how we bring people together, how do we make sure young people are open, more open-minded? How do we deal personally with difference? So all of us, including our members of our board, are teaching, taking the intercultural development inventory, which is a self-assessment of how you deal with difference. And we'll move forward on that front. I believe that all of us need to think about positive local and national initiatives to solve the problems we now face in America in advancing education and democracy. When we look at the data that says that 35% of millennials say they're losing faith in democracy, it's a frightening time, I think. We cannot take for granted our democratic culture, our political system, and our civic life. Um, we have a model in America for how we might think of doing this. It's the land-grant universities who developed the model of extension agents to take the knowledge from the campus and the university out to farmers. We became, a, we became a superpower as an agricultural economy. And I would ask that all of us think about what we might do to make sure that we preserve the things that are important in our country. So I ask you, women leaders, what if we came together and made a commitment to establishing a national civic engagement network focused on specific local problems but giving our students the opportunity to move around from campus to campus? So those from Alabama go to California and Oregon goes to West Virginia. Think of what that might do to expose our young people to the challenges that we face in the country to rebuild our civic life and to show them they can solve these problems. It's already happening with young people in this country. They're standing up and saying, we can solve these problems, but I think we could help them. Let me end with this. I had the great privilege to educate 48 of those young women who escaped from Chibok, and they're all out there now. When they arrived on campus, they didn't speak English, they didn't speak at all. They were completely traumatized, and I wondered, have we made a terrible mistake bringing them here? But they began to learn, and they're doing extraordinarily well, and now many of them will be graduating and going back to Chibok to rebuild that city that is completely devastated. Right before I left, I asked one of them, Mary, what does this education mean to you now? And these are her words. And I ask that we take these words and make sure that all of our students and all of the young people in our communities feel this way about education. Mary said, education gives me the wings to fly, the power to fight, and the voice to speak. Thank you.